plastic here, and I want you to uh, pull it to where it just past your bottom edge or the bottom of the PVC. Is it just past the bottom? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Now, if you will, go ahead and hand me the blue top of the double-sided tape. There's different types of this double-sided tape. This is the uh, double-sided tape that you would want to use to stick to the PVC. Uh, they also have double-sided tape that you can stick to painted surfaces. So just keep that in mind, they've got different grades of it. So pull it tight, and we're just basically going to stick it right here to the edge. Pull it tight, don't stick it yet. And we want to try to keep it straight, right? Nice and straight, nice and square, that looks pretty good to me. We're just going to press it right to that edge. Go ahead and press yours. And we're just going to roll. Now this will give me uh, three sides. It will give us three sides of containment. If you have the 20 by 100 roll, what it will do is give you all four sides. So even less. And then uh, generally what I do is I, I use my cutoff to uh, do the top and the bottom. It's nice to have the 20, especially if you do, you know, if we work with, you've got to consider what we work with a lot with. If you work a lot with uh, the 8 foot or 10 foot ceilings, then there's going to, again, be less plastic or waste. So this is one little piece. This is not really going to have much use for that, but I'm going to set all of our extra over here that's left over. What type of plastic should we be using? And what is the fire retardant rating? And uh, why is it medium slip? What does that mean? There's no oil or tap. And the tape is thick, and then the surfaces in which we walk on. Um, also, I noticed yesterday, it's not really that big of a deal. I want you to just stick it half to the plastic. Is we uh, pulled it almost too tight that the PVC starts to flex and bow. And keep that in mind when we're putting our containers together. Maybe it doesn't need to be quite as tight as we put together. So if you notice, I did the sides. Now what I'm going to do is just pull this back up, and I want to get the plastic tape to the tape. You can also put double-sided tape where we're doing this now. Uh, it's much easier to be able to do it uh, with uh, two people, but you can do the work that we're doing uh, with one with the double-sided tape. <coughs> then the next thing we're going to do, Shane, if you uh, grab you a pair of scissors there, we're going to do ahead, go ahead and do our tops and bottoms. Uh, and you want to work opposite of each other so that we can pull it tight uh, from each other. So I'm going to do mine first and then you want to trim yours after I do mine. Because we'll, uh, we may pull it back a little bit more. After we do the exit chamber, I'm going to do a containment on the ceiling with the ceiling grid. Let me show you another way that you might find to be helpful putting a containment on ceiling grids. Go ahead and trim it again and then pull your tape. And once we do that, we'll rotate. You know, Swan Team did a fantastic job on their uh, exit chamber. Nice and tight. Uh, pretty impressed yesterday seeing that happening. As I mentioned, the you know, where it's our containment that the client sees, and uh, we want that to be uh, a good representation of our company. We want them to be able to see that and um, you know be confident of what's going on inside the company, inside the container. So press it to, and then you're just going to kind of roll that, pull it tight, and roll the PVC and stick it right through the PVC. 
where we talked about on Wednesday all of our edges around the perimeter of the containment. That's where the tape should be. That's where our seams should be. It uh, makes it look much cleaner. We also have an easier or a better ability to attach containments, exit chambers, <clears throat> Let me do mine first. If we were to put all the seams in the center rather than the edges and you had to cut into one of those multiple layers of plastic, that could essentially cause our containment to fail. There we go. Go ahead and do your side. Sometimes, and I notice this here, you see a little imperfection in the plastic. This actually came through the, from the mill process. Um, this is almost like a liquid, and then it's pressed. So a liquid's poured into a press, and they run through a mill, and then they put the, uh, the cuts into it, and then it's folded and goes into a box. But that's if you were to see this here once we stand it up. Uh, that's just a drip or... Maybe as it's going through the press wheel, there was something on the, on the wheel that caused this imperfection right here. pre-cut that we'll, um, we'll be using to do the last side that's left and the top and bottom. On one side of this I'm going to put a zipper on and then the other side I have we're going to do the triple flap doorway. We all walked through it yesterday but I'm going to show you uh, how to put one together. It's a uh, can be done on any type of containment. I think it's a little bit easier to construct it and put it on the 2x4 containment, but you can do it on the PVC, we can do it on the uh, tension poles. It is. That, it is. What's that? That's Yes. That means it's good, right? Uh, it's a double-sided tape. <coughs> I've used a lot of different tapes. It's actually, one thing I did with the, uh, in addition to just finding PPE and suits and, and gloves that work well, I actually uh, went through many different brands of tape because I was just simply tired of finding tape or, or using tape that you stick to the containment. And, You'd open up the zipper and the zipper would fall off or the, the tape would fall off, the containment would fall apart. So this is what we're using. Very good, looks good. Nice job. So we're just going to rotate it here to the top edge. Uh, my piece here is pre-cut to go from the top and then we're going to go that way. Uh, find a factory edge and we'll just put it right here. Here. It's important to do all sides of the containment. You want to do the top, you want to do the bottom, you want to do all sides of the containment uh, so that it is completely sealed. Pull it to you. There you go. We've got a little bit of leftover here, and I'm just going to use that. Uh, in that third hand that we can make use of. I'm going to take my tape, go ahead and reinforce the seam, and then we'll attach all the other sides that we need to attach. This white tape, uh, we used it yesterday, um, 
blends really well. It uh, has a perforated edge and again it's a nice tape that sticks well. Exactly what we want it to do. So come back right down here. Pull it tight right here. Thank you, sir. And just for timing purposes of this video, I'm not going to do a uh, top or this side that is, I'm going to leave it open. But keep in mind, we want to do all the sides. All the sides of the container. So we're going to pull it tight. Very good. And we'll go ahead and do this side. talked about yesterday with a 2 by 4 containment, giving yourself a little bit of extra material around the center. When you staple through the plastic, you want to staple through two layers <coughs> rather than a single layer. Russell said this morning he talked about using the blue foam, the seal seal, uh, to seal or help seal off those open areas that uh, might be coming from baseboard or crown molding. So you can take your blue foam, your seal seal, or it's pink, depending upon where we didn't want to cut that. So you used to cut it. Put it right there. We'll just put a piece of tape on it. Take the side. But you can use it like a backer rug. If you're familiar with what that is, it, you just stuff it into a, a crack or a crevice to help fill it. Uh, backer rods generally used to uh, as a pre-fill prior to a caulking or uh, masonry uh, mortar. And that's what we did with the seal seal. We put it in there so that we limit or reduce the amount of airflow. We're going to roll it all the way over one more time. Something else that's also important, we want to work from opposite sides. Think of how maybe uh, flooring, especially carpet, would be installed. They're going to work from one side of the room and then to the opposite side of the room. If you go around the perimeter of the room and you get to the corner in which you started, what do you think is going to happen? We're going to end up with extra material. So when we do our containment, you want to do the top, then your bottom, and then your sides. Let's stick it right through the plastic. I don't know if it was this class or another class I did. They said, I don't like this tape. It's too sticky. <laughs> <laughs> this tape is too sticky. I guess. It's too good. Too good of a tape. Uh, another little piece of plastic that's left over we're not going to be able to do much with. We're going to rotate it and do these last two sucks. Also, when I put the zipper on, everybody walked through. We saw the upside down T. That's what I'm going to do on one side. I'm not going to put the flaps on this, but we do understand we want to have a flap with the sleeve on each side of each zipper, correct? Then the other side we'll be doing the uh, triple flap or Z flap for it. Stand up and put the zip on. 
the containers that we constructed yesterday, they should take us generally uh, in the neighborhood of, I would say, two and a half hours, two people. So if you wanted to use that for estimating purposes to give you a better idea, two and a half hours, uh, two people, two technicians. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Shane. Everybody clap it up for Shane. Awesome job. So this is our leftover. This little bit here. This is a larger piece. But by no means is it uh, enough plastic left over <coughs> to maybe do a, a whole other containment chamber. So keep that in mind. We want to limit our leftover plastic. Limit the scrap. Once you unroll it, it picks up dust. It's got a static charge to it. I don't know if you noticed it yesterday, but it easily picks up the dust and debris so it gets dirty. And rarely do we save it. Maybe we have the intentions. But we typically are going to dispose of all that extra rather than actually saving it. When we put a zipper on, we want to open from the bottom up. My preference is the three inch zippers. I find they stick better. Again, this is something that we want to have good quality so that it does stick to the containment. Uh, I noticed yesterday that uh, I call it prep work. We were putting the tape on the plastic and then putting the zipper on. Um, we may have been taught that way or we saw it done that way at some point, but if you get a medium factor poly and it's a good quality plastic and a good quality zipper, then we don't have Excuse me, we don't have to put the tape on first. We can stick that zipper right to the plastic. We want our zipper to open from the bottom up. And I also, we also want to have the bottom of that zipper um, opening or where it's going to be cut at the very bottom or top edge of that PVC. We want to just use these lines, try to keep the zipper perpendicular, that should allow for it to be straight. You see that my extra went across the top, that's fine. Now we're just going to start to peel it back and stick it. Uh, they have these three inch zippers, a couple different manufacturers. Uh, the blue, I uh, saw a green one yesterday. They also have them in red. Any of those three inch zippers um, will do a good job. So consider a three inch zipper, any of the three that we used yesterday versus probably anything else. This is also something that you want to maybe consider keeping in a climate controlled environment, your plastic, your tapes, and your zippers. It's not as much of a concern in the summertime unless you're really in extreme heat and humidity, but definitely in the cold, in the winter. When we have a, a cold spell and uh, the plastic gets cold and the adhesives get cold, then it really starts to become an issue of anything sticking. Maybe you have it in your truck you might want to consider bringing it in so that it gets the room temperature and everything starts to stick uh, or has a better chance or opportunity of sticking. So our zipper stuck, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my various duct tape, make it upside down T. <coughs> Yesterday we didn't use any knives. Right? We don't want any accidents. <coughs> I like a good pair of scissors out of like every toolbox. Knives are handy. Uh, a good blade, as long as we're using them properly. Um, they make a tool to cut the center of this out. My understanding the reason the tool was constructed is because if we don't make a straight cut, then all that jagged cut and Looks like we chewed through it and then our zipper starts to snag on it. But actually the straighter this cut, the smoother that's going to open and close. 
And that's what's key, that's what's important. So I'm just going to puncture through this. And I'm going to use my finger and thumb as a straight edge. And cut right down the center of that zipper. What's key is making a straight cut. And if we look on the back, the material that's revealed is nice and straight. It's a straight cut that's going to allow for smooth operation of that zipper. <clears throat> we'll just trim down to the bottom. I like to get just below the stop of the zipper. If we do trim the stop of the zipper off, be sure that you add additional tape. Because if the zipper's coming off, there's really no getting it back on. It makes it very difficult to reattach the zipper. So now that we've made a straight cut, and if you see from the top to the bottom, it's the same reveal. And when we open and close the zipper, it operates extremely smooth. And that's the key. That's what's going to keep it from popping up. I also like to, after I open it and cut it, just run my hand along both sides. Uh, you can see to where the blue hasn't, and that's just where it really hasn't stuck as well. So I want to press those down, get those air pockets out. And we do that to both sides. Now this zipper should stick as long as I can take it. It needs to be up. That's how we do a zipper doorway with the upside down tape. I'm going to spin around to the uh, this side. <coughs> we talked about yesterday uh, attaching the exit chamber to the containment. There was a few questions on that. That's where the double-sided tape really comes in, uh, in handy. Who did I give that to? <coughs> so we take our double-sided tape, and uh, you would go around the entire perimeter of your exit chamber. I'm just going to do this one side um, because there's another way so I'm going to show you both ways of doing it to where you can either choose to use the double sided tape or just simply cut up the center. Again I, I like the scissors to do this and they're nice straight cuts because you don't want the tape, the double sided tape to overlap. You want it to butt to each piece. Actually let's do the top as well as the sides and that we can see it. So I want it to butt, not overlap. And I'm going right around the perimeter. I don't know if you notice, but I'm not, uh, when I press this, I'm not pressing along the edge. You'll get a pretty nasty paper cut, so I like to have a towel in my pocket. Then I'll come along and, and press that down and secure it well to the plastic. And we're on a project now that we've gone all the way around the perimeter and we've attached it uh, or butted the cuts. I like to just get these started. I'm going to fill the blue top back. Uh, this can sometimes be a little difficult, maybe scratch at it. Uh, if you've got a knife or a piece of tape or maybe a good fingernail, and you want to scratch it back. I don't want to pull it completely off. I just want to get it started, exactly what we've done here. So you're going to get it started all the way around the edge. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll get our scissors, get the cut started. And I want to leave myself approximately one inch. That's what I call my thumb tab. That thumb tab is going to allow me to pull this tight when I attach it to the containment and then press the double-sided tape against my containment. That makes sense to everyone? So we cut out the center, the entire center of this containment, all the way around. Now where I didn't put this double sided tape, uh, if we don't have it, that's fine, because what we can also do is just simply cut and leave the uh, edge here, consider it like a nailing flange for a window uh, that you're putting in, a new window has a nailing flange and that's going to be used to attach to our containment. I want to leave a little bit of material on the bottom. We saw yesterday we were losing some pressure differential, 
I'm going to guess that it was probably at the bottom edge where our two containments, the exit chamber and the containment itself, attached. <coughs> so we'll cut this at a 45 degree angle. And the bottom will tuck into the containment. So as we see on the video, this little flange here will tuck onto the containment so that there's no air getting in between the containment and your exit chamber. <coughs> as we walk in, we're going to come in through the zipper. We're going to slide this up to the containment. So right here would be our containment. We grab the plastic, you want to make sure that your zippers on the exit chamber and the containment are shut. You pull it tight, and then we'll tape this directly to the face of the containment. Or if we're using the double-sided tape, now what we're going to do is we're going to reach in there, get that started, and as we're pulling it tight, you're pressing it against your containment. And then I like to go in and reinforce that seam with the white tape with the three inch white tick. That's going to create a nice seal between the exit chamber and the containment and when we enter and exit, like an airlock, one zipper, one doorway at a time, we should only lose that half a Pascal. We should lo lose minimum, only lose minimum pressure when entering and exiting. Any questions on this? Alright, so we cut the center out, that gives us a, an attaching nailing flange that we can use from one door to another, one from the exit chamber to the container chamber. Now I'm going to take this side and we're going to do the triple flat doorway. Z flat, triple flat, traditionally that's constructed with three layers, we're going to start with our one clean side. It's our first layer, and notice that their seams are on the perimeter. There's no extra material in the middle of this plastic. I'm going to start with our tape, and I'm going to put it over here offset from the center because I know my next piece is going to be approximately 12 to 16 inches from this piece to the right, offset to the right. Take the duct tape, and we make the letter L. Now as I come down, we call this the stem, as I come down my containment wall, I don't want to go all the way to the bottom. I actually want to stay off the bottom. I like to be about six inches on my first layer. We're going to finish the letter. And these are approximate. Notice I'm not getting the tape measure out to measure these and make sure that they're exactly six inches. Then we're going to start that cut, come across, and then come up. When we do these properly, this will allow us to maintain that pressure differential when entering and exiting. That's our first layer. I need someone else to come up and give me a hand who'd like to do that. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. We're going to add our next couple layers, uh, I've got those pre-cut right here. Let's see, I've got two of the pieces. Let's see, this is it. This, one, this is the larger piece, so that's not the one we want. This one. To finish this, I'm going to lay it back on its back. Down just like this. We can add the double sided tape here uh, or just the, the white tape edge. <coughs> My piece is pre cut. I'm going to roll it out. And we're going to use the factory edge. You pull it just to the top. Right, or you're about flush, good. And we're going to use our white tape. I'm going to stick this to the plastic for now, and just to the top. Pull this tight, get it square. 
come back to the center, take the center, and come to the top and the bottom. Thank you, sir. And if you want to grab your roll, you can pull it tight. Uh, or I'll pull it tight. And you go ahead and take it. Here you go. And you're just going to come right here to the edge. There's a variety of ways to do this. The idea is that the layers of plastic alternate, they overlap. So whatever method you choose, you want to make sure that the layers are overlapping, that with the pressure, they will close on each other. Whether you have a negative pressure or for some reason we end up with a positive pressure, the layers of poly, the layers of material, will seal off to each other. <clears throat> now I'm going to come back, we're going to trim this off here. The extra material I have is going to be all the other layers we need to finish this. So again, very minimal scrap. Very minimal waste. I'm going to start down here. We're only taking the plastic. Make sure it's pressed to the plastic. And I want to pull it tight, but not too tight that we start to flux the containment. Just want to get the slack out the best that we can. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next layer of my L. Again, I'm offsetting where my cut will be, approximately 12 to 16 inches. Then I'm going to go past the first cut. This first cut was made at approximately 6 inches. I'm going to drop down 3 inches below that, approximately. And I want the L to go in the opposite direction, so backwards L, reverse L. This will allow for multiple layers. And we just poke in, and you want to make sure that you don't cut the first layer. Got it? Yes, sir. Nice job. Good. To do the last uh, pieces, <coughs> yeah. Let's just finish it all on the ground. We talked about a six inch sweep for the upside down teacup. With this, you don't need the extra six inches as long as it goes right to the floor. Uh, that is acceptable. On this, we're only going to tape across the top. Uh, you can use spray glue. What's the hazard of using spray glue? Flammable, toxic. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend using the spray glue inside this extra chamber, especially being this small. Uh, some of you might enjoy it, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. And you do another flap inside? Yes, so we're going to do another flap on the inside, and that's what this will be used for. We're going to pull this tight. Uh, or actually, I'll pull it tight, and you're just going to trim it right along the edge of the PVC there. This is our third layer. Traditionally, it's three layers. That's why they call it a triple flap or a Z flap. If you were to uh, cut a cross section and look at this from the top, it would make the letter Z. <coughs> I had a fourth layer because if we were to get positive pressure inside the containment, I want a flap to seal off that. I want an additional layer of plastic to seal that off. Yesterday when we made these, what did we think about the door? A little restrictive to get through. We also want to make sure as you go through these that when you turn around before you, or you want to turn around before we open up the uh, next zipper or next triple flap doorway and make sure that these layers of plastic have laid properly. We want to make sure that they're 
not stuck wide open because if this first zipper or door is stuck wide open, what's going to happen when we open up the next door? <coughs> We're going to lose that pressure. That's exactly right. We're going to go ahead and sand it up now. Uh, the extra plastic, we're going to take it, <laughs> we're going to come right in here, attach it to the top, and then just trim off what we don't need. We've got a factory edge, or should have a factory edge, just like it's over here on the right. And this is again is where if we're using double sided tape and where you're by yourself, that double sided tape uh, can come in handy. So you don't need the six inches on the bottom of these ones? Not on this one, that's correct, because it's, we've already made that step up. So the six inches uh, is used for the zipper because as we get the negative pressure, it will uh, draw in. So it comes in, we call that a, a sweep, like the bottom of a shower door or the bottom of a storm door. It wouldn't hurt if you had the six inches, but it's, if we construct it as we see uh, here on the pictures, uh, it's not going to be necessary. I'm just going to come back and trim the extra material. It's funny how wrong the guy at work who taught me how to do this is. Well, did it work? No. Oh, well, then I so guess. So we never used a thermometer, <laughs> so I don't know if it worked or not. <laughs> Did it look good? It did look good. Well, sometimes that matters as well. We might have killed customers, but it did look good. I decided. see that the L's overlap, everything overlaps at the bottom, so that if we get a pressure differential and the plastic starts drawing in, every layer closes on top of each other. That's exactly what we want it to look like when we're finished. Three inches here to here, three inches to the bottom, six inches to the first cut. <coughs> Any questions on this? Okay, I'm going to slide this back out of the way. Thank you very much for the help. In your experience, which is better to use? Well, what did we think yesterday when we went in them? Which was easier to go in and out of? Felt maybe safer to go in and out of? Zipper to me. The zipper with the upside down T cut that had a sweep or flap with it on each side. The zipper by itself or the triple flat doorway? What do we think? The zipper like this with the T cut? There you go. It's up to you. We're, I'm showing you ways um, that will allow us to maintain pressure. Now, you're exactly right. I agree. This is safer, uh, this is more comfortable. If you notice, we have almost the entire opening of this doorway. We can bring in large equipment. Yeah. We can uh, safely carry out the debris. When we go through this, especially me being 6'4", I've got to duck to get in through here. Then I want to come back and make sure that the layers are laid flat. 
We talked about this yesterday. Why might we do a triple flap or a Z flap door? <coughs> we didn't put any zippers on the truck. <laughs> right? We got back and instead of loading our truck back up, perhaps we leave. We go home for the day. It happens. I understand. Put the zippers on the truck, have the plastic on the truck, have the tape on the truck, and we shouldn't have to do a door like that. Now what I'm going to show you is how to 